Everybody land for me when you want, you can jump, boys. Cool. Okay. We will let this puffy puff. So, line of sight, which way are you going, Mark? I'm gonna go line of sight, like on the. I'm straight I'm straight pillar. The left, of the pillar. left of the pillar. I should go right for the pillar? I'll be to the right, like bottom of the scree almost. So, that's your exit direction? Yeah. Let's go scree. Pillar, turn right, and then on the backs, Jesse. Cool. 10 seconds? Okay. Cool. Alright. I've been coming here for 10 years. The first time I came to Canazé here in the Dolomites was with my father about 10 years ago. And just over here, there's a, a climbing route called Abrams Arete. It's about 2,000 feet tall. And my stud of an old man and his buddy were climbing up this thing. They were about a thousand feet up. And at the time we were here flying paragliders. And it was just the most cool moment that uh, father and son could have. I launched the paraglider, flew over right next to him on a nice thermal. And, you know, we were taking photos of each other and kind of having a chat as he was a thousand feet up on the wall. We were a thousand feet overhead flying in our gliders. And this place I've, you know i've been back here five six seven maybe ten times now and if there's one place that i want to come back to every time to hang out for a summer vacation this is it something about the dolomites is just has this magic here everything looks like it's coated in frosting or like fairy sprinkles or something if i sent a photo to someone they'd be like is, it, is there snow on those rocks it's just like the magical rock here. It's just crazy. Um, they're huge jumps, obviously, and some of the biggest in the world, but just something about it. it's a little extra special, a little extra beautiful. We flew to Milan and drove the cars to Lake Garda. My name is Marshall Miller. Buongiorno! And welcome to the Italian Dolomites. My name is Jesse Hall. We're in Italy. Palatou. The, the jumping gets you here, but the other 99% is chilling in these amazing places and hiking in these mountains and seeing these views and eating the food and seeing some of the culture and I love that stuff. That's what I love about base jumping. To Altissimo, super beautiful jump above the lake. Um, gonna land on the beach with the girls and start the day off right. Altissimo is a jump around Lake Garda. You stand on top of this thing, and as you look down, it's very visual. Super beautiful location over the lake, really tall vertical on the jump. There's lots of terrain below you. The actual cliff is not that tall. It's not just a big cliff with wide open space. It's kind of narrow, and there's all these ledges, and it's super visual as you're jumping off. You're, you're the fall. man, brother. You're the okay, man. Guy. Yes! Yes! Here you go! When you stand on top and look down, you see the terrain below you where you would naturally hit unless you properly start flying your wingsuit and fly away from this thing. All right, bro, I'm gonna jump straight at that grassy, like the grass in the middle of two gullies. Okay. See that? I'm gonna aim for the left goalie. Okay. All right, 10 seconds. Set! 
Ya baru hepot Alright bro 5 4 3 2 1 Here we go you're kind of falling down this track with stuff on either side of you as the suit's getting pressurized, filling up with air, starting to get that forward drive. Um, you're just looking at all this stuff going by. Once you catch some speed, you turn right, cruise across all these little ridges, past some fingers that are sticking up, and then you bank a big left turn and just start bobsledding down it all the way to the lake as fast as you can. It's really fun to fly down terrain with all that forward speed. Uh, it makes the suit super responsive. At any point in time, you can lift up uh, hundreds of feet, and it just feels really good to be flying the suit that fast. The other special thing about that jump is you open up right over the beach. Yeah, bro! We came down, landed right next to the girls, this crystal clear water, um, everyone's hanging out, having a good time, it's just a really cool spot to land. Yeah. Watch that inside. Yeah, buddy. Yes, it was. That's oh. it. Wow, that was a sick little line, huh? <laughs> and then, of course, Banana Joe pulls up in his boat. Banana Joe! And he's got he's making drinks on the boat. He's got lunch for you. It's, it's just like kind of ridiculous how cool the jump is from start to finish. It just has has everything you could imagine and more. Oh, I got right here. Yeah. <laughs> Let's take it, all right. A lot of the exit points that we found around the lake were on the fun side. You know, there's one jump and, and two different types of jumps too. We had one jump where you leave your suits, leave your wingsuits and everything at home. The jump is called Campione. It's about a thousand feet tall and everybody runs off together or you run off and do as many flips as you want. It's, it's way less stressful than a wingsuit base jump. It's like a five minute walk in the car. Man. You land next to the restaurant on a nice grassy area. It's just such a nice jump. green grass, like a golf course. It's dark. It almost looks like water. The sunset bells are going. Yeah. Yeah, dude. How you feeling? Feeling good. All right. Camera Jesse's all fired up. You guys have fun. Yeah, boy. Chow, 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 We were just going flips after flips after yeah. flips, out of sight, out of mind. I was like, yeah, buddy. <laughs> Sweet, Jess. Hell, yes. Boom. <laughs> that was a freaking Whoa. winner right there, guys. Oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> and it's nice to have that contrast. It finds nice balance in between where you have the fun jumps, where you're just jumping off in your regular clothes and doing flips and high-fiving your buds. 
as opposed to the wingsuit base jumps. You're zipping up your arms in this stray jacket and you take a few deep breaths. You have to jump off in a perfect flying position. You can't do flips, you can't do anything out of the ordinary, especially some of these jumps we're jumping off of, they're shorter starts, you know, so you have to get the wingsuit flying before the ground comes up underneath you. Oh, damn. That one was pretty precarious on the edge. There's a rope, it's kind of a lot of loose rock. About 50 feet below you, there's a big ledge that sticks out. It doesn't look like you should jump off of this. If you drop a rock off of this thing, it hits that ledge every time. It's pretty intimidating. There's clouds moving in and out. We weren't sure what the weather was gonna do, so everyone was a little on edge. It was an interesting dynamic where we jumped off of it before, and the conversation kind of took a turn to negative town for a second, and there was a lot of doubt. That stuff's really contagious. When you're on, on an exit point, if one of your friends says, I'm not feeling this right now, it's a tough thing to hear. It's a tough thing for your friend to even say because it's, uh, it's a very individualized sport. I was feeling it. And when you see the line, you see the success, you gotta go for it. Hi guys, see you in a minute. And so I zipped my wingsuit up and just jumped off of this thing. Ciao guys. Jumping into this valley that has a couple lakes in it, and you think that's the whole jump. You're like, this is a pretty big, nice jump, and then you bank a left turn. So you traverse, traverse, left, left, left. Fly over a ridge, and you actually drop into another valley, and you have thousands more feet to fly. over the forest, um, down to this perfect little church in the vineyard. Ah! You land right next to it and pack in this beautiful zone. It was just a perfect Italian job. It felt so nice to be there and, and to do that one. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> so sweet. <laughs> yeah, dude. Wow. That is awesome. Oh, it's so crazy how once you get going, like all the stress and weird shit's gone. You're like, yeah. I'm just ripping. Yeah. Hell yeah. Nice work. So this jump right behind us here is called Sass Pordoy. First few times we showed up here, we looked at this exit point and just thought, no way, not for me. It's just, it looks like such a big ledge that you have to jump off and trust your wingsuit's gonna open and start flying away. And um, you're just, you're gonna pull it over a little bit here. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, don't do anything you don't feel comfortable with. I feel like that. And right there, you're flying. Dude. It was the first time that big wingsuits were kind of becoming introduced to base jumpers. And two of our really good friends started this company, and they've just revolutionized human flight, in my opinion. Wingsuiting's come a long way. Uh, the sport changes very quickly, whether it's the perception from watching somebody else do something or the actual suit increasing in performance and efficiency. Um, every year we, we see fairly incremental changes, but over the course of the last 10 years, it's really become a different sport. The performance has increased a lot. I mean, we're getting 40 to 50 percent more glide performance in a mid-range suit now than we were 10 years ago. It's still early days though, right? Like there's still 
a lot that we don't know. There's still a lot that we're learning. And I would say it's kind of like the golden age of, you know, wingsuit base jumping, right? It's like, it's like the era of El Capitan when there were no roots. You know, like the past five years have been like that. We've seen an explosion of new exits in the Alps and all over the world. And it's an exciting time to be in the sport because there are so many new places to jump and discover and new lines of flight to establish. It's, I mean, we're lucky to be here at this time. When you exit a cliff or jump out of an airplane, the suit has inlets on the top and or bottom surface. Those inlets allow air to come in and that's actually what gives the suit its shape and inflates. We've got top surface curvature, profile camber, all those things that generate lift in a normal airplane wing are included in a wingsuit wing. The difference is that you know, there's a person literally inside of it and it takes a few seconds if we're jumping from a cliff. It takes you know, a second or so if we're jumping out of an airplane. Once that wing's inflated, we have the wing shape and off we go, we're gliding. If it takes your suit a thousand feet to inflate and get flying, then you can't jump a cliff that's 800 feet. So um, as the suits have progressed, that altitude, that initial inflation time has gone down and we're starting faster and faster. So we're able to jump more sites. And that's what's really opened up wingsuit base jumping in North America and in other areas, we're able to jump basically shorter cliffs and get flying and fly out away from the terrain. Yeah, I wish I could tell you guys exactly when that exit was wingsuited for the first time from the cross, as we called it, but the cross exit definitely was getting jumped regularly in like 2010, 2011. And these days, thanks to technique improving so rapidly over the past five to 10 years and wingsuit equipment getting a little better, it's a pretty standard jump, which is cool. It's one of the most easily accessible and beautiful and easily repeated jumps um, that, that we know of, really. Great place to hang out. Okay, guys, five. And now, you know, we're flying through this on our back, we're doing barrel rolls through this thing, people are flaring up and around it. The progression of this stuff has really been fun to participate in. We should actually go up there tonight after dinner and just look at it, see your eyes on it. Yeah. Because that's going to be like home base for a long time. The refuge is kind of like our base camp uh, lodge for the next few days. Or if you go deep, you go to the right there. We're gonna go try to tag the tallest eight peaks in this area, in this zone. And to have a helicopter to put us on top of these things, we can only imagine the smile this puts on our faces. This is what we're talking about. 
All the jumps in this area are epic. I, I couldn't even pick favorites if I had to. If the weather's good over here, we're gonna be jumping over here. If it's good over there, we're gonna be jumping over there. And I'm not gonna have any complaints either way. They're, they're all huge jumps with lots of cool terrain, um, beautiful landing areas, and uh, yeah, super excited. Yeah, just got on top, right where we want to be. That's a good one. Wow. Wow. I was on Marshall the whole time, just freaking right above him. We were wall surfing to the left, ripping, 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 went through all these notches, switched over to the right side, and we we're wall surfing back down here, like no all these little tree gates. Left, you... We went all the way around everything. Damn. <laughs> As you fly by rocks and trees and terrain, that's maybe the draw that we have for wingsuit terrain flying. And so to feel stuff passing by you on the sides, above you, below you, by, by the sides of your hands, looking over and seeing your friend doing the same thing, that really gives you the sense for what we're doing here. Last day of this trip, we do have one mission in mind. It's a brand new jump that was just opened not too long ago, and it looks super intimidating. You literally jump into a canyon with big dagger size rocks on both sides. Guys, what's up? Welcome to the Death Star. This exit is living up to 
every bit of its word. Definitely the most visual exit point I've ever stood on top of. I can see the line though, it goes. It goes. It goes. Yeah, brother. Nice and smooth. You still want to light the fire? Or... Can I? Yeah. Sure. I think it feels really nice right now. Yeah, it feels good, looks good. Chuma. What a trip, bro. What an ender. Taz with Taz. Yeah, yeah, have a good one, man. You're awesome. Yeah, man. Well, sure, guys. I'll call you in the LZ. Yeah. But do you want to go right after Jess? I'm probably just going to follow if it looks smooth. Okay. Okay. I feel like the highest priority in this life is for us to make the very most of it. And by making the very most of this life means so many different things to so many different people. All right, five, four, three, two, one. Wash over me. To me personally, making the most of this life is creating incredible memories. When you're on top of an exit point with your best friends and you share this moment where you all lean off and jump off together, that's pretty rad. It's pretty hard to simulate in any other form of life. I feel like these are the trips that's gonna make me smile the very most when I'm 100 years old. See, it's, I think it's, more forgiving than it looks. Yeah. Because he definitely went dead low. He's going pretty fast. Yeah! <laughs> 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 <laughs>